everyone, Fluffy Dragon here. Welcome to my first ever video. I am super excited to be bringing you the full list of free mounts in Wizard 101 and how to get them as of November 2021. I really hope you all enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's get right into it. The first mounts we're going to talk about are the ones you can buy with gold in the crown shop. I know these are pretty well known, but the list wouldn't be complete if I didn't go over them. So to find these mounts, go to the Permanent Mounts tab in the Crown Shop and then click the Gold option in the lower right corner. This shows you all the mounts that can be purchased with gold. These include the Bengal Tiger, Royal Lioness, Proud Lion, Horned Sweeper, Dark Redwing, Enchanted Broom, Chestnut Pony, and Black Stallion. I think these are all great mount options for someone just starting out, and I even used the Blue Dragon on one of my first wizards. So if you're looking for a super easy to get mount, these are your best bet. Next up are the mounts that you can buy for gold from other vendors as long as you have the badges required. Most of them are from Mirage vendors, but there is one in Old Town as well. The first mount is the Calyx Co. Magic Carpet, which you can buy from Advisor Francy Fries. To find her, take the teleporter to the Ruble Wastes. From there, head down the ramp into the Green Oasis area. At the bottom of the ramp, make a right, avoiding the House Calyx Co. guards. Follow along the wall until you can safely run toward the main building and then head inside. Once you make it inside, you should be able to see Advisor Francy Fries at the back of the room. Here is her location on the map for anyone who is wondering. Okay, so you can find the mount in the Equipment Shop under the Mounts tab. As you can see, you need the Boa Bruiser and Unconstrictable Badges in order to buy this mount, but once you have them, you can purchase it for 75,000 gold. Here are the requirements for the badges. And let's move on to the next one. This is the Drommel Magic Carpet, which you can buy from Guillermo. He is located in the Caravan, right next to the entrance for the Spiral Door area. Here is his location on the map. In his equipment shop, you can see that he will sell the mount to you if you have the Archaeologist and Treasure Hunter badges, and then it costs 75,000 gold. This is one of the easier carpets to get in my opinion because all you have to do for the badges is sell antiquities to him. Here are the exact requirements for both of them. Next up, we have the Hood's Magic Carpet. This one is sold by Robin in Agrabah. To find him, just take the teleporter to Agrabah and then run forward just a little bit. He'll be on your left and should be really hard to miss. Just in case though, here is his location on the map. You'll find the Hood's Magic Carpet in his shop, and it requires the Agrabah Enforcer and Agrabah Sheriff badges, and then you can buy it for 75,000 gold again. If you're like me, and you farmed the 40 Thieves for the 6% Pierce Jewels, you probably already have these badges. But for those of you who don't have them yet, here are the requirements. Next, we have the Siamese Magic Carpet, sold by Prefect Joseph Hat. To find him, take the teleporter to Yakal Mountain, make a slight left turn to avoid the rebel warriors, and then keep going straight until you see an elevator on your right. Take it up to the higher level, and then go left. You should see a building with a yellow window and paw print shaped door. You'll find Prefect Joseph Hat in there, on the right, as soon as you go inside. Here he is on the map for anyone who is confused. Again, go into the equipment shop and you'll find the Siamese Magic Carpet available for 75,000 gold as long as you have the Siamese Sergeant and Rebellion Crusher badges. Here is what you need to do to get these badges. The Serpentine Magic Carpet is next on the list and it is sold by Destro Uctor. You can find him by taking the teleporter to Istanboa and going straight ahead. He should be very easy to spot, but here he is on the map anyway. Destro Uctor actually sells elixirs along with the mount, which is pretty cool, but that's not the point. In the equipment shop, you'll again see the magic carpet, which you can buy if you have the Serpentine Scout and Dunes Warrior badges, along with 75,000 gold. These badges require two different types of enemies instead of just one, so make sure you fight the right ones for the badges. The last of the Mirage mounts is the Tabby Magic Carpet, and it's sold by Captain Kate. To find her, take the teleporter to Catterwall Canyons and follow the water toward the buildings. As you get closer to them, turn to the left and you should see Captain Kate standing in front of House Tabby. Here she is on the map. For some reason, my wizard appeared in the wrong place on the map, but my cursor and the housing icon show her actual location. 
You'll find the Tabby Magic Carpet in her equipment shop, and once you have the Tabby Soldier and Tabby General badges, you can buy it from her for 75,000 gold, just like the others. Here is what you need to do to earn these badges. And now for the Sand Swarm Mount, which you can purchase from Derek Blaze in Old Town. He is right in front of the bazaar, so hopefully no one will have trouble finding him, but here he is on the map just in case. The Sandswarm Mount can be purchased in his equipment shop for 7,500 gold, so it is cheaper than the others, but oh boy, do you pay for it in time. This mount requires the Team Manager badge to purchase, which definitely makes it the hardest of the badge mounts to obtain in my opinion, because you need to help 1,000 teams through the Team Up kiosk. So unless you really like this mount, or already have the Team Manager badge, I would definitely recommend going for one of the Magic Carpets instead. The last of the purchasable mounts are the ones that are available for arena tickets. They are sold by Brandon Mistborn on Unicorn Way. You can find him right next to the PvP arena. Here he is on the map in case anyone needs it. In his shop, he sells the Fire Wyvern, Blue Kirin, Unicorn Charger, Gorilla Juggernaut, Unicorn Courser, and Gorilla Skirmisher. I really like the Unicorn Charger, and I'm currently saving up for it on my Balance Wizard by doing tournaments. Even if you lose all the matches in a tournament, you should still get around 250 tickets, which is great for me because I'm terrible at PvP. So if I can slowly save up my tickets for one of these mounts, you guys can too. We're moving on to crafted mounts now. The first ones we're going to talk about are the School Whirlwind mounts. You can buy the recipes for these from Kalkos Coppersmith in Aquila. He's right next to the sigil for Mount Olympus, so he's very easy to spot, but here he is on the map just in case. So Calco sells the recipes for each of the mounts for 60,000 gold. For the most part, the recipes don't require anything too crazy, but there are two ingredients that can be somewhat difficult to obtain. These are Ultra Seeds and Motes of Transport. The best way to get these, in my opinion, is to farm Master, Archmage, or Exalted duels, as both ingredients can drop from these. Plus, these duels have a chance to drop permanent versions of these mounts, which could save you the effort of crafting them, but I'll talk more about that in the Dropped Mounts section. Here is a list of everything you need to craft each mount. Feel free to pause if you're looking for the ingredients for a specific one. The only other craftable mounts are the Digmore and Ravenwood pogo sticks. The recipes for these mounts are only available when the 5 boxes event comes around and they are sold by Rose Piper for 60,000 gold. You can find her in any of the telegraph boxes during the event. And once you buy the recipe from her, you can craft the mount at any time as long as you have all of the ingredients for them. Both mounts require a sonic spring to craft them, which is a reagent exclusive to the 5 boxes event, so make sure you get at least one while the event is going if you plan to craft one of these mounts. Here are their full recipes for anyone who needs them. The next mounts we're going to talk about are all obtained from fishing chests at various houses. From what I've heard, some take longer to fish up than others, but they're all pretty cool mounts that I think are worth the time and effort, especially when the zero energy fishing benefit is active. You should be able to find all of the houses you need to fish in through housing tours. If the house you need isn't listed, you can try asking around the commons to see if anyone has the house and would let you fish in it. For all of these mounts, I recommend winnowing the most common school of fish in the pond and then casting the buoy chest spell. This should help you fish for the mounts more easily. Alright, first up for the fished mounts is the Aqualin Dual Chariot. This is a two-person mount that you can fish for in the Acropolis house. The fishing area is very easy to get to. From the start of the house, all you need to do is go through the teleporter and then turn around. The fishing spot should be right behind you. Next we have the Arcane Minecart, which can be found in the Midday Estate. Again, the fishing area for this mount is very easy to find. As soon as you enter the house, you should see water at the bottom of the hill. I think this is a really nice pond to fish in because you can step into the water to easily reach all of the fish, so you don't have to constantly attract all of the fish to your location. The only downside is that it's a large area, so the fishing spells might take a bit longer to reach all the fish in the pond. The Arcane Minecart is a pretty unique mount that I don't see many people use, so I think it's pretty cool and would definitely recommend fishing for it if you like it. The Bat Wings and Swift Shadow Wings are kind of a two for one because they are both found in the Darkmoor Manor. To find the fishing pond for these, start at the beginning of the house and go through the covered bridge. Make a right when you reach the fork in the path and then continue forward a little bit until you see the pond on the right. It has a small dock that should help you spot it. 
Almost all of the fish in this pond are death fish, so I would definitely winnow those if you're going for these mounts. I'm also not sure how the drop chances work for these mounts, so even though there are two that you can get from this house, it may not double the chance of getting a mount. Either way, it's pretty cool that you can fish for both of these at the same time, so if you like these mounts, why not go for them? Now onto the Battle Narwhal, which can be fished up from the Polarian Shipwreck. To find the pond for this mount, you'll need to go to either the left or right side of the house entrance. If you run forward a little bit in either direction, you should see lots of water to fish in. And it's a good thing too, since this mount is heavily sought after because it gives your wizard 2% universal damage when equipped. During zero energy fishing, lots of wizards typically try to fish for this mount, so the Polarian shipwrecks listed in Castle Tours can get a bit crowded. I've heard this mount is usually time consuming to fish for, taking several hours or more to get, so be prepared for that if you want this mount. Next on the list is the Bee Wings mount, which can be found in the Amber Estate. The fishing area for this mount is super easy to find since you should be able to see the water as soon as you enter the house. Unfortunately, you can't step into the water in this house as far as I know, so you'll most likely have to attract the fish to you to catch them. I have seen a few Amber Estates in Castle Tours whose owners created a path out over the water using housing items, so if you want to look around for one like that, it would make it easier to fish, or at least save the annoyance of having to attract all the fish to you. Next up, we have another two-for-one, the Camel and Magic Carpet Mounts, which are found in the Nomad's Camp. From the start of the house, go all the way down the ramp to the right until you reach the oasis area. This is where you can fish for the mounts. Unlike the last house, you can step into the water here, so it should be easy to reach all of the fish in the pond. Again, I say this is a two for one, but that doesn't necessarily mean you will get one of these mounts quicker than one from a different house. Depending on how the chances to fish up a mount are calculated, it could be the same odds as any of the other fished mounts. Now onto one of my favorites, the Celestial Wolf from the Botanical Gardens house. The fishing pond is pretty difficult to find if you don't know what you're looking for, so here's how to get to it. From the start of the house, go to the right and head toward the gazebo. The path splits and you should keep right. There is a section of the wall that looks like it's made of vines. You'll need to walk through it and then stop about halfway to the other wall of vines. On the right, there is a wall that looks solid that you can actually walk through. If you follow the path on the other side of it all the way down, you should reach the fishing area. There is an upper level to this pond too, and to get to it, you'll need to head right toward the area where the ground is made of rock instead of grass. There is another secret passage through the wall here, and if you follow it all the way up, you'll reach the higher fishing level. The Feathered Raptor is up next and it's found in the Serpentine Escape House. The fishing spot for this mount is super easy to find because it's right in front of you as soon as you enter the house. There are more places to fish in this house as well though, as you can fish at the top of the waterfall, and there's even an interior place to fish if you go underneath the waterfall. So there's lots of fish in this house, which is nice because it saves you from having to reset the pond all the time. Now onto our second two-person mount, the Malorian Dragon found in the Winter Wind Tower. The fishing spot here is pretty well hidden again, so here's how to get to it. From the entrance, go through the teleporter and then continue along the path until it splits into two. Head to the left and then out onto the ice. Follow along the edge of the snow until you reach the frozen waterfall and then walk through the wall to the left of it. You can easily spot it by looking for the tiny bit of grass peeking through from the other side. Once through the wall, go toward the teleporter and that will take you to the fishing area across from it. You can't step into the water to fish here, but thankfully it's a pretty small pond so it shouldn't be too hard to reach all the fish. The Tyrannosaurus Rex is another two-person mount and you can fish for it in the Pyramid of the Lost Horizon. To find the fishing area, you'll need to head left from the start of the house. You should see a volcano in the distance, and that's what you need to go toward. At the base of the volcano is a lava pool that you can fish in. As you can see, there's already a T-Rex mount here to keep you company and hopefully give you good luck if you fish at this person's house. Anyway, the fish in this pond are a little hard to see, and you'll definitely need to attract all of them to you because the lava pool is pretty large. It actually goes all the way up to the house pretty much, so there's lots of space to fish. We have one more bonus fishable mount, and it is the Swift Griffin from the Massive Fantasy Palace. 
Disclaimer to everyone watching, as far as I know, this mount is not a confirmed drop from fishing, but some people claim to have gotten it, and at one point, if you clicked on someone who had the mount and looked at the details on how to get it, it did say you could get this mount from fishing. However, I checked and this has since been removed, so I would advise against trying to fish for this mount because all of the previous ones I listed are confirmed drops and this one is not. So unless you really like the Swift Griffin, I would go for one of the other fishable mounts instead. Now it's time to talk about dropped mounts. First up on the list are the Croco Sphinx mounts. There are three versions with different colors, a Popfis's Croco Sphinx, which is pinkish purple, Satesh's Croco Sphinx, which is brown, and Sokar's Croco Sphinx, which is green. These mounts are dropped from the secret Cybermander battle in the Doomsday Croc Gauntlet. As far as I know, they drop from every tier of the gauntlet, so if you bring a lower level wizard or alt into the gauntlet with you, it would make farming for these easier. The armadillo mounts are up next, and there are three variations of these as well. The only major differences between these are their eye color and saddle colors. From left to right, we have the Mosian armadillo, the Ramblin armadillo, and the trusty armadillo. These mounts are dropped from the Great Sky Train Robbery Gauntlet, and sources differ on where these actually drop from within it. Some say it's from the final boss fight, and others say it's from the secret pets only room. You have to fight all the way through the gauntlet to access the pets only room anyway, so it's probably best to just get the treat from in there before you leave the gauntlet, just to make sure you cover all the bases. Unfortunately, you can only get one drop per day from the pets only room, so if that is where the mounts drop, it's not something you can farm for hours until you get one. Next, we have the Dragon Wings. These drop from McDeath in the Accursed Play Gauntlet. According to the Wizard101 wiki, this is a confirmed drop from every tier of the gauntlet except tier 5. The mount most likely drops from tier 5 as well, but if you want to play it safe, make sure the lowest level wizard is either above or below levels 80 through 99 so that you avoid tier 5. Again, I would recommend bringing a very low level wizard into the gauntlet with you to make farming as easy as possible. Plus, if you do that, you definitely won't have to worry about whether or not Tier 5 McDeath drops the mount. The Rock is the next mount we're going to talk about, and it's a drop from the Sinbad and the Iron Sultan Gauntlet. This mount is heavily sought after because it gives 3% power pip chance, which can be really helpful for PvP and just for improving stats in general. So, to get this mount, you'll need to farm the secret boss, Metalossus. He's a little bit tricky because he only appears in the gauntlet sometimes, so here is a trick to make sure he's there before even fighting the first battle. After sitting through the dialogue and cutscene at the beginning, which there is unfortunately no way to skip, get on the boat. Once you're in the room with the metal tours, go up to this wall on the left carefully to avoid getting pulled into battle. Then, go into Photomancy and move your camera into the wall using the arrow or WASD keys. Then, move your cursor around until you see an enemy name pop up. If it says Leadite, go ahead and leave the dungeon and start over because Metalossus is not there. If it says Metalossus, then congratulations, you're good to continue with the dungeon. Moving on to one-shot duels, we have the School Whirlwind mounts, which I already talked about in the Crafted Mount section, but these are also drops from various Master, Archmage, and Exalted duels depending on which of the mounts you're after. Here is a list of which bosses drop each mount. Keep in mind that all tiers of each boss drop the mounts, so if you have a Rattlebones Master and Exalted duel, you have a chance to get the mounts from both. From my experience, the drop rate for these is pretty high, so you will hopefully have an easy time getting these mounts if you want them. The only other one-shot dual mounts are the Tanglewood Stalker from the Tanglewood Terror Gauntlet and the White Striped Zyger from the Battle of the Bands Gauntlet. These are rare drops from the final bosses of their respective duels. These gauntlets normally cost 500 crowns each in the crown shop, but KI recently gave out a code for a free Tanglewood Terror Gauntlet, so if you have a group of friends who all claimed that code, you could farm for this mount for free. The Battle of the Bands Gauntlet, however, wasn't given out as a code, so if you want to farm for the mount, you'll have to find someone willing to buy the gauntlets and let you farm with them to have a chance at the mount for free. We're moving on now to the mounts that are dropped from Skeleton Key bosses. This is probably the largest section, but I've done my best to keep it as short and simple as possible for you guys. So first up, we have the mounts from the wooden key boss, Ra. He drops quite a few mounts, including the Camel, Crocagator, Mander Palanquin, 
Moonlight Pony, Starlight Pony, Star Shine Pony, and Sunshine Pony. You'll find Ra in the secret room in the Krakatopia Library. The room is through the door to the right of Zanae. There are two Skeleton Key Boss sigils in this room, Sapoti and Ra, but Sapoti sadly doesn't drop any mounts, so you'll want to skip his sigil for now. Ra is a pretty easy Skeleton Key Boss, and he seems to drop the mounts pretty regularly. I even got the Starlight Pony from him in less than 10 tries, so I'd say he's definitely worth farming if you like the mounts he offers. Next we have the mounts from another wooden key boss, the Temple Phantom. This boss drops the blue, gold, and silver Kirin mounts and can be found in the Hollow Mountain Dungeon in Kembalung Village. To find this dungeon, take the boat to Kembalung from Krakatopia. Once there, follow the path until it splits and then go to the left. Continue all the way up the hill until you reach the sigil. Here it is on the map in case you need it. Once inside the dungeon, you'll find the skeleton key door after you either solve the Temple Guardian's puzzle or defeat him. In the next area, there will be a few more enemies to defeat and then a key door on the left side that you can unlock afterwards to reach the Temple Phantom. The last of the mounts you can get from wooden key bosses are the purple fairy wings, which you can get from the Spirit of Ignorance in Crab Alley. His sigil is at the very beginning of Crab Alley, as you can see here on the map. This boss is extremely easy to fight, but his drop rates are abysmal from my experience. Most of the time, you get nothing but pet snacks and treasure cards. So, with that in mind, I think your time would be better spent going for a different mount unless you're super set on having those purple fairy wings. But if you do plan to farm for this mount, I wish you the best of luck. Next up is the first of the stone key mounts, the Pirate Rowboat, which is a two-person mount. It is dropped from Captain Hawkins in Waterfront Zafaria. To find him, take the teleporter to Waterfront and then follow along the wall on the left. You should see the sigil as soon as you turn the corner. Be careful not to walk into the Greyhorn Mercenaries, because if you've completed Zafaria, you've already fought enough of these for a lifetime. Here is Captain Hawkins on the map. Next up is the Mander Palanquin again. This mount is a drop from both Belosh and Ra, so I already mentioned it when talking about him. But now we're on to Belosh, who is found in the House of Scales dungeon in Zigazag. You'll need to teleport into Zigazag using the statue in the Balance School in Krakatopia. Once there, head toward the Upside Down Pyramid to find the entrance to the House of Scales. In the dungeon, you'll find Belosh's key door after you defeat the condemned manders and continue into the next room. The key door should be in front of you as you walk in. I would only recommend farming Belosh if you're looking specifically for the mander palanquin. Otherwise, I think Ra is the better option for getting mounts in general. The Ankylosaurus, Arcus Cloud, Crocagator, Feathered Raptor, Gold Raw Eagle, Jeweled Scarab, Triceratops, and Tyrannosaurus Rex are all drops from Ixcax Cursed Wing, the final stone key boss on the list. You can find her in the Black Sun Pyramid Master Chamber in Three Points Azteca. To find the dungeon, just climb all the way up the stairs of the large pyramid. Once inside, you'll need to reach the last room where you find Belloc. There is a stone key door on the right side of the battle, and that is where you will find Ixcax. She seems to drop mounts pretty generously, as I have gotten both the T-Rex and Crocagator mounts from her, so hopefully you guys will have similar luck if you farm her. Next up is our first gold key boss, Omen Stribog, who drops the Frostfang Tiger, Himalayan Yak, Lufilum Wings, Owl, Snow Ram, White Stag, Winter Glide Skates, and Winter Treant. You'll find Omen in the River of Frozen Tears in Polaris. If you take the teleporter to this area and then go to the right, you should already be able to see his sigil, so just continue over to it. Here he is on the map, just in case. I've had really good luck with mounts from Omen. I have the Snow Ram, White Stag, and Winter Glide Skates, and I've only fought him 10 times at most, so his drop rate seems to be very good from my experience. The Aether Cloud is another gold key mount. You can get it as a drop from the Aether Elemental in the Northeast Aeroplanes in Imperia. To find this boss, you'll need to head from Velo City into the Southwest Aeroplanes, and then from there, run to the Northeast Aeroplanes. Once you get here, you'll need to head toward the Stone Bridge on the right side of the map. Cross it, and then you should see the sigil. I sped up this clip a little bit because it's a pretty long trip here, but just try and take in the scenery on your way. 
The Ether Cloud is a pretty unique mount that I don't think many people have, so it's definitely a fun mount to go for if you want something different. And just in case anyone gets lost on their way, here is the location on the map. The final mounts you can get from Skeleton Key Bosses are the Chocolate Moose, Casual Gummy Bunny, Fancy Gummy Bunny, and Formal Gummy Bunny. These mounts are dropped from the Stay Puffed Marshfellow boss in the Nibelheim Mines in Caramel. To get to the boss from the entrance of the mines, stick to the right hand side of the cave, avoiding the gummy bunny enemies. Take the ladder down a level, and then continue staying to the right. You should see the sigil after a bit more walking. For some reason, my wizard didn't appear anywhere on the map, but my cursor shows where it is. This boss has a lot of health and some pretty interesting cheats, but these mounts are worth the struggle in my opinion because they're super cute. We're in the final stretch now with the event and holiday dropped mounts. The blue and orange fairy wings are available when the five boxes event is active. They only drop from the highest tier of the telegraph box, which is found in Avalon. They drop pretty often from what I've seen, so if you have access to the Avalon tier of the event, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting one of these mounts. The Bone Dragon drops from the Lost Pages event. This mount is available from the final boss of every tier of the event as long as you are the correct level for it. So this means that a max wizard can't farm the lowest level boss and get the mount. Here are the level brackets and the bosses you need to farm for each of them, for anyone who needs it. I have farmed for this mount and the drop rate seems to be pretty low. I haven't gotten it on any of my wizards on my main account yet even though I've farmed for quite a while, but my alt account lucked out and got it on the first try. So if you guys farm for it, hopefully you'll have the kind of luck my alt account had. The last of the limited time mounts is the Stormrider Hare, which can be farmed from various bosses throughout the spiral during the Spring Festival event. The bosses you can farm for this mount are again based on your level, so here is the list of where to farm for each level bracket. Just like the Bone Dragon, you will have a 0% chance of getting the Stormrider Hare if you farm the wrong bosses for your level, so make extra sure you're farming the right ones. Last, but certainly not least, of the dropped mounts is the Mammoth Mini, which is a drop from Warlord Minak, the final boss of the Jeweled Slopes dungeon found in Borealis Peaks Polaris. The Mammoth Mini is a really cool mount because it gives 2% outgoing healing, which is helpful for Jade setups. From what I've heard though, the drop rate for this mount is very low, so it might take a while to get. If you like it though, there's no reason not to try for it. Alright, so that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. This video took a lot of work for me to put together, and it would mean the world to me to know that you all enjoyed it. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!